The hand in ancient primitive cultures around the world has always been viewed as a source of spiritual, religious, and magical powers. Gestures such as giving a benediction, emphasizing a message, and directing our energy through prayers, thoughts, and words is common in all cultures. In many cultures, the hand is a symbol of protection, of warding off the evil eye, of stopping a wagging and gossiping tongue, as well as arcane, magic, and occult powers, from black magic and white and everything in between. As a symbol of protection, many have heard of the hand of God, the hand of glory, the hand of power, the hand of Fatima, the mano de Asabache, the mano de Fico, and the mano cuernuto. The, protection, the protective symbol of the hand is common in all major religions around the world, from Christianity, Buddhism, Confucianism, Hinduism, Islam, Spiritualism, Spiritism, Judaism, Shinto, and Taoism. Today we will be taking a look at La Mano Poderosa, or the All-Powerful Hand, as it is viewed in the Hispanic community, here on El Sancista Brujo Luis. House of Jerusalem, where the Christ entered and all evil was expelled. I ask, may all malice and evil be removed from this space, and may light and healing take its place. O powerful hand of God, I place my soul before you, and in my despair and anguish beseech you to aid me with your almighty power. At your base I place the devotion of my sorrowful heart that I may be delivered from my earthly trials and tribulations. May the loving and kindness of your powerful hand help me and give me the strength and wisdom to live in peace, harmony, faith, hope, fortitude, justice, prudence, temperance, and a charitable heart. May I stand for humility against pride, kindness against envy, abstinence against gluttony, chastity against lust, patience against anger, liberty against greed, and diligence against sloth. Amen. Casa de Jerusalén, donde entró Cristo, y el mal a ese punto salió, entrando al instante el bien, yo pido a Jesús que el mal se vaya y venga el bien y sanación por esta santa oración y por Cristo nuestro Señor. Aquí vengo con la fe de un alma cristiana a buscar tu misericordia en esta situación tan angustiosa para mí. No me desampares y la puerta que quiera abrirse en mi camino sea tu mano poderosa la que me la cierre para no entrar en ella. Si no me conviene, o oh, me la dejes abierta, si ha de volver mi tranquilidad tanto tiempo deseada. A tus pies dejo esta súplica, que te hace un alma obligada por el destino a grandes sufrimientos, que ya no pueda combatir. Si tu mano poderosa no detiene la ley de la razón, Dios mío poderoso, los de saciertos, que yo he cometido durante esta existencia, la cual llevo de frente, dame fuerza para soportar, soportar las amarguras de esta vida. Que la bondad de tu poderosa mano me ayude y deme la fuerza y la sabiduría para vivir en paz, armonía, fe, esperanza, fortaleza, justicia, prudencia, templanza y un corazón caritivo 
puedo yo defender la humanidad contra el orgullo, bondad contra la envidia, abstinencia contra la glotonería, la castidad contra la juria, paciencia contra la ira, libertad contra la imprudencia y diligencia contra la pereza. Así sea y así será. Amén. Today I'm going to be talking about la mano poderosa, or the all-powerful hand, that is, as it is used uh, with Hispanics. I know that if you know a Hispanic brujo or an espiritista, you will often see la mano poderosa, or the image of la mano poderosa uh, within their altars. Okay? Uh, they're both old. Uh, I'm going to move this candle, which is a candle that you can get at any botanica or any market, it spells, that sells spiritual supply stuff. So I'm going to remove it. You can see that right here, I burned a, a lot of candles. So I'm just going to remove the candle, maybe place it right there before this picture, uh, just for the video. And I'm just going to uh, give an analyze, uh, just analyze what La Mano Poderosa is. So La Mano Poderosa, as we know it today, uh, is a symbol of protection. Okay, it's a symbol of protection, of halting, and of warding off negative vibrations. Its idea was brought to the Caribbean and South America uh, with the first Spaniards or Spanish conquistadors, and later with the missionaries and the settlers. Now, saints and religious paraphernalia from Spain, uh, such as Los Cinco Personas or Los Cinco Seres, uh, was used as a way of teaching the African and the indigenous population the life and the ver veneration of the Catholic saints. Originally, the Santos were brought to uh, the Americas, or the Santos that were brought to the Americas were either statue or uh, religious uh, paintings known as retalbos. Retalbos are altar pieces. Uh, while the Mano Poderosa does have much uh, or much Catholic elements, much of its elements is rooted in uh, the blending of folk Creole traditions such as Espiritismo and Curanderismo, uh, which are spiritual traditions that are intermingled with uh, Spanish European uh, elements, West African religion, and indigenous spirituality. La Mano Poderosa, or the all-powerful hand that we know of today. So this image that we know of today, the most popular one, uh, has its origins in the Puerto Rican wood-carved Santo Retalbos, or altarpieces. The oldest Mano Poderosa Retalbo uh, comes from, or the oldest Puerto Rican one, comes from the city of Arecibo and Camuy, Puerto Rico which dates around back to as late as the 1800s. And then there was the, uh, there's an earlier, older version of a Mexican retalbo uh, of the Mano Poderosa, which came similar to this picture right here, which is similar to the picture right there, uh, which was a, a framed Mano Poderosa, uh, which comes from Mexico in its flat, Tin Retalbo that dates around 1807. And then the Puerto Rican Mano Poderosa in its wooden uh, carved Santo de Palo Retalbo, which dates back to the, 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 the oldest ones that I know of date back to around 1800s. And then there are some that are in museums that date back to around 1915. Uh, the Puerto Rican wooden Mano Poderosa mimics its elder Mexican predecessor with some uh, differences. And many people might not even notice the differences unless you really look closely. And in fact, if you're looking at these two Mano Poderosas, you will see that they are differences. And I'm going to go into that as well. But the Mano Poderosa, uh, the Mexican Mano Poderosa, has the cinco señores or cinco personas that the Spanish brought uh, to Mexico. And each rests on top of a finger, while the hand on the Mexican Mano Poderosa uh, rests on a chalice as the blood 
as the blood on the wound it overflows over the palm and quenches the thirst of around seven, seven sheep or lambs. The Puerto Rican Mano Poderosa it does not usually include the chalice or the blood pouring out or the lambs, um, and, and usually it rests on a heavenly cloud, which is what you see right here. And it is surrounded by uh, four angels or four uh, cherubim. Some call it the cuatro vientos. The cuatro vientos are the four winds or the four living creatures. Some call it the four living creatures, uh, the four cherubim. Uh, cherubim angels are the second highest order of the ninefold celestial beings in the, in, the, uh, in the hierarchy of angels. And cherubim are usually angels of protection. Uh, some say that they are the four archangels. So four archangels would be, let's say, Michael. Let's start with San Rafael. San Rafael is the angel of the east. San Miguel, San Miguel or Saint Michael is the angel of the south. Uh, San Gabriel is the angel of the, the west. And then we have Uriel, and Uriel is the angel of the north. Others say that these are the four angels. Ev ev evangelistas, the four ev evangelists. And the four evangelists are Matthew, which is often uh, viewed as the winged man. We have Mark, which is viewed as the lion. Luke, which is the ox. And John, which is the eagle. So if you see closely, this one right here, which is made out of, what you call this material in English, it has four cherubims around a cloud. Let's see if you can actually doesn't show the two, the four other two in the back, but it should be surrounded by four cherubims. While the newer versions have the four angels right up front, the four cherub of the four cherubims, cherubims fall under the, I think it's the second. Uh, cherubims fall under the second spear of angels. Is it second or third? Yeah, they fall under the second spear of angel, while all angels fall under the third spear of protective beings in the angelic order. And a, lot of, a lot of people are like, I don't understand what that means. But I just wanted to place that out there. Now, if you look at the angels here, or in some pictures of the, like this picture back here, uh, I think it's going to be on your right-hand side. You'll see that the angels are holding an emblem of the passion of the Christ. Uh, one angel holds the thorn crown. Another holds the cross. One holds uh, either a, a sponge or a hammer or nails. And usually the fourth is holding what seems to be either a pillow, a bowl, or a chalice with blood. Excuse me. In some instances, only three of the angels hold an item from the passion of the Christ. While the, one, while the last one usually has his hands clasped in prayer. Let me see if I can, no, nope, none of these right here. Maybe in the picture, I don't see it, but you know, usually has one that has his hands clasped in prayer. Another difference between the Puerto Rican Mano Poderosa and the Mexican Mano Poderosa is usually the position of the saints, okay? Uh, and I'm going to go with the Puerto Rican one because I'm not really too sure about the Mexican one. Well, I do know the position of the saints, but I don't know why they have it in that order. But I do understand a little bit of why we have the order of what we do in the Puerto Rican Mano Poderosa. So usually baby Jesus or a Nino Jesus sits on the thumb, and the thumb is ruled by Mars. Uh, and that finger in palmistry or, or, or arcane knowledge is ruled by the spirit of fire or the element of fire. Then you have the Virgin Mary. And the Virgin Mary stands on the pointing finger. And the pointing finger is ruled by Jupiter and is of the element of either water or air. Uh, Saint Joseph is usually on the middle finger and that finger is ruled by Saturn. And it is of the element of earth and fire. Santa Ana, or Saint Anne, Mary's mother, is on the fourth finger, or the ring finger. And that's ruled by Apollo, and is of the element of fire and water. 
And then usually we have San Joaquin or San, yeah, San Joaquin. I don't know how to pronounce that in English. San Joaquin is on the pinky finger. San Joaquin was the father of Mary, the grandfather of Jesus. And uh, the pinky finger is uh, ruled by Mercury and is of the element of air or earth. So the Manu, Podor, the Manu Poderosa was created uh, by the Spanish uh, to teach the African slaves and the Taino people or the indigenous people the cult of Santa Ana, Saint Anne, which is right here. Santa Ana is the mother of the Virgin Mary. But like most religious uh, things in the Caribbean, you'll notice you'll notice this in in, in Santeria and many traditions. The saint uh, took on either African or indigenous spirits. And this also happened with La Mano Poderosa. As uh, people who practice Santeria or Santerismo or Espiritismo, uh, they, they did call the saint who they were, but they also intermingled it or used it as a representation of either an African spirit or an indigenous spirit. And that's what I want to talk about in this second, what they represent. And if you notice, at first glance, you might not notice the difference, but they are actually different saints. And I'm just going to go into how uh, they're used in you know, in mostly in Espiritismo, whether it's Espiritismo Criollo, Espiritismo Cruzado, what the saints represent, you know, what spirit they may represent. So we're going to start off with this hand, okay, which is more of the modern version of La Mano Poderosa. And you see that the Jesus child right there, Niño Jesús, is on uh, the thumb, and usually in Espiritismo or in Santerismo, that could represent Candelito, Piti Solier, or Chiqui Solier. The Virgin Mary on the pointing finger would represent Anaisa Pie. Uh, Saint Joseph, or San Jose el Carpintero, uh, would represent uh, Ogun Guerrero. And then we have Santa Ana. Santa Ana right there on the ring finger, and she will represent uh, Gran Sili Daume. Then we have San Joaquin on the pinky finger, and San Joaquin would represent a uh, Papa Loco or Papa Boco. You see the four archangels in the bottom. They could also represent a uh, Miterios or or Loa or spirits used whether it's in Sanse or an Espiritismo. So we're going to look at St. Michael, and I'm going to use, it. I don't know which one which one is which, but San Miguel would be uh, Belie Belcantome, San Rafael would be Indio Alagüe, Indio del Agua, then we have San Gabriel, San Gabriel is Gran Cari, and San Uriel would be Uriel Belcan. And this is just uh, spirits that were used in you know, that how espiritistas or sancistas, sans is a fairly new spiritual tradition that branched out from voodoo and, and espiritismo mixing, but that's how they hid their spirits with, or used these saints to represent their spirits in, their, in these traditions. Now, uh, looking at it, you won't notice the difference, but if you look at this hand, you'll notice that these are a little bit different. A saint. And I'm going to show you closer. Let's see if you can see the differences. And we're going to go into this hand. This hand right here mimics this picture right here. This picture and the picture on the candle. And I'm going to place the candle to the side. But if you notice, the one used in Templos Espiritistas, it's usually a different group of a uh, santos. Now this hand is the one that you will see mostly in older espiritistas or people who practice Santerismo, Espiritismo Cruzado from Cuba. And you will notice uh, different santos. And on the thumb, you will notice El Niño de Praga right there. And El Niño de Praga could represent El Egua or Piti Solier or Candelito. On the index finger, we have La Virgen Milagrosa. 
Our Lady of, of Miracles, and that could represent uh, Obatara, Yemaya, Aida, or Papadambara. On the index finger, we have a uh, San Jose, San Jose holding El Niño Jesus, and that would uh, could represent uh, Papa Ogun or Papa Oko, depending on the tradition that you practice. Then we have uh, the ring finger, and the ring finger, you'll notice it's Santa Barbara. And Santa Barbara can represent Chango or Candela. Uh, Candela is the female counterpart to Papa Candelo. On the pinky, you will see St. Jude, San Judas. St. Jude can represent either Osain, uh, El Espíritu del Gran Bosque, Spirit of the, of the Forest, uh, Gran Boa, Gran Boa Ile. So you'll see a little bit difference uh, from this hand to this hand. And again, th this hand has the angels. I'm going to put this candle here just to hold it. This is what you can see where I keep my candles for years. This one has the angels while this one has uh, the cherubim. Usually it should have the four cherubim which represent the, the, the four cher protective cherubim of the Garden of Eden. Uh, there's an angel in the Garden of Eden who, that protects each uh, point. So uh, a cherubim in the point of north, a cherubim in east, south, west. Or they could represent archangels, which is more in this hand or this mano poderosa. I don't want to make it too complicated, but I just want you to see the differences right there. I would like to also add that if you notice in La Mano Poderosa, or the older versions, I just realized it had seven. It had the two uh, cherubims in the bottom and then the five uh, santos on the top. And then you see this, this top piece. Uh, this would demonstrate its Indian elements, its Taino elements. It represents like an Indian chief's headdress. So this represents your uh, siete jefes, your siete potencias, your siete poderes. We are all governed by seven uh, chieftain spirits. So this right here, this headdress, has a lot of Indio elements, a lot of Native American elements, Taino elements. And again, it represents your siete jefes. And this is where your Indian element would fall. So it often resembles an Indian uh, headdress to symbolize, spiritually symbolize, your siete jefe spirits, your seven chieftain spirits of your cuadro espiritual. And I just want to, uh, I wanted to add that and I completely forgot. So again, the headdress is, there's your Indio element. So you will see a lot of African element, a lot of, uh, European element and also your Indian elements, your Indio elements. And again, in Sanse, we call them los siete jefes. In Santerismo or Santeria, you have las siete potencia. Those are your seven chieftain spirits, tus siete jefes. They govern a, either a layer of your body, uh, a, a layer of your aura, and a function in your life, in your development, in your spiritual growth. Now, I do not have a Mexican Mano Poderosa. I don't own one, so I'm going to show you uh, pictures of Mexican uh, retalbos. Retalbos are altar pieces. And you'll see the differences in the Puerto Rican Mano Poderosa and the Mexican Mano Poderosa and where they place their saints. Usually, San Joaquin. Uh, which is in the pinky finger in the Puerto Rican version. In the Mexican, San Joaquin would be on the thumb. St. Joseph, which is on the middle finger on the Puerto Rican one, he would be on the pointer finger in the Mexican. Then the child Jesus, who's on the thumb here, would be in the middle finger. Mary, who's on the pointer finger, she would be more on the ring finger. And Santa Ana, or St. Anne, would be on a, the pinky finger instead of uh, the ring finger. And like I said, if you notice, the Puerto Rican Mano Poderosa usually has the cloud uh, with the four archangels. In the Mexican Mano Poderosa, 
And you will usually see La Palomita Blanca, the white dove, which represents the Holy Spirit, uh, usually flying above. Usually, if you notice La Mano Poderosa, it is the right hand, and I'm going to go a little bit into that. It's rare that you will see a Mano Poderosa being used with a left hand. So it is, let me show you my right hand. It is a right hand. This is my right hand. So usually it is the right hand, and I'm going to go into a little bit more on that in a second. Uh, so they use the right hand, and in rare uh, occasions, they use the left hand. I'm going to remove this candle. So I move the candle, but you will notice that the Mexican Mano Poderosa usually has una palomita blanca or a white dove usually flying above here, which represents the Holy Spirit. And it usually represents, you see blood coming out of the wound, the wound and into a chalice or the hand rests in a chalice. And around the chalice, you will see seven sheep or seven, yeah, seven sheep or seven lambs uh, drinking out of that, uh, the blood, which you do not see in this version all of the Puerto Rican Mano Poderosa. Also, you will notice that it is the right hand as I have demonstrated. Here is my right hand. And here is my left hand, and I'm going to go into that in a second. My left hand and my right hand. And usually La Mano Poderosa is depicted as the right hand. And you will see on La Mano Poderosa eh, where they placed the nails into Jesus' hands. Some say that the hand is the hand of Jesus Christ. And other people say that this is the hand of San Francisco, St. Francis of Assis. Uh, who was the first saint to suffer the stigmata. The stigmata were the wounds that Jesus the Christ suffered on the cross. So some people do say that the hand is of the hand of Jesus Christ, or Jesucristo, and other people uh, argue or say that the hand represents the hand of San Francisco, who was the first uh, santo uh, to suffer the stigmata. So I'm going to get a little complicated since I already uh, mentioned uh, the left and the right hand. I want to talk about, about the duality or the yin and yang energy, especially as seen within the hand. The right hand, which is the hand most used in La Mano Poderosa, sometimes you will see the left hand, but mostly it is the right hand. The right hand is viewed as the hand of God and of spiritual mysteries. And in many religious traditions, uh, the right hand or the yang hand is the masculine hand or is of a cool energy and is associated with cleanliness and ben benevolence. This hand is usually balanced by the feminine yin energy, which is associated with slow, cold, wet, soft, passive, and yielding energies it is balanced out by the lunar energies now the left hand which is rare that you will see the mano poderosa in the left hand but the left hand is known as the hand of el diablo or the hand of the devil uh, and is viewed as the hand of the occult and arcane mysteries the left hand is of a feminine energy or yin hand, and it is associated with hot energies, darkness, and occult knowledge. As I said, it is called La Mano del Diablo, or the, uh, the hand of the devil, and I'm a lefty. I write with my left hand, and it's crazy to me that as far back as the early 80s, teachers would try to stop me from writing with my left hand. I write with my left hand. It wasn't viewed as socially acceptable to write with your left hand. And they try to teach me to write with my right hand. I'm still a lefty. That's how far back, I mean, to the 1980s, they, whether they knew it or not, they viewed that the left hand was incorrect. And I am still a left-handed person. So I strayed away a little bit from there, but the left hand is viewed as the hand of El Diablo or the hand of the occult and arcane mysteries. Uh, the left hand is of a feminine energy 
or the yin hand, and it is associated with hot energies, darkness, and occult knowledge and wisdom. Uh, it is balanced out by the uh, yang or solar energies. Yang is associated with fat, hot, dry, hard, and aggressive forces. I know this is going to be a little bit confusing, uh, but I just wanted to show you the duality within the left and the, the right hand and how, you know, it might be used spiritually. Now, most retalvos or altarpieces to La Mano Poderosa usually has na uh, nine figures. Nine is a very spiritual and symbolic number. As you notice right here in this Mano Poderosa, there are the five a holy family on the fingers and then the four a, archangels in the bottom. This one right here, which is more associated with Santerismo or Espiritismo Cruzado, you will see the five a, figures on the top of the fingers, one on each finger. And I just realized that there's only just two a, cherubim on the bottom of the cloud and there's none in the back. But remember, seven is a very spiritual number. We often have in Espiritismo, siete, seven jefes, uh, seven uh, spirits, you know. We have millions of millions of spirits, but we have seven chieftain spirits within our cuadro espiritual, uh, which can go into just many things. And I've talked about that in a, in a, in a video before, but I want to go more on to the symbolic number of nine, or el nueve, as it is viewed in the Hispanic uh, culture. You can see this is a big hand, but I want to go into nine and how it is viewed in the Hispanic uh, culture. So I'm just going to put this candle back. It's still lit. So nine, we're going to uh, talk a little bit about the number nine and how it is viewed in the Hispanic cultures. Nine is known as the number of the dead, el número de la muerte. And in Hispanic cultures, when someone passes away, we do la novena for nine days eh, to usher the spirit into the realm of the spirit. The word la novena means the ninth. So we do nine prayers for that spirit uh, to usher that spirit into the realm of where it needs to go. Uh, nine symbolizes patience and harmony. Nine is the number of uh, for accomplishing one's uh, destiny, for accomplishment, and one's final destiny, and one's divine will, uh, as well as the number of immortality. Uh, also, nine has a lot of uh, symbol symbolism with uh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Jesus died on the cross. It is said that he died on the ninth hour uh, while he was on the cross, and he appeared to his disciples uh, or to his apostles nine times after his resurrection from the dead. So nine has a lot of uh, spiritual symbolism, and when someone passes away, in Puerto Rico or in Hispanic cultures, we do a novena for that person for nine days. We usually, when the person passes away, we take a day of rest. We bur we bury the person, we watch the person, take a day of rest, and after that day of rest, we do a novena for nine days to pray for that spirit so that that spirit can uh, be ushered into the realm of, of light or where that spirit needs to go. So we do a novena. Uh, 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 and I said la novena comes from the word the ninth, ninth, nine days of prayers that we do to usher a spirit into the realm of the spirit. La Mano Poderosa has a lot of spiritual uh, symbolism, and I hope a lot of people uh, learn something today from this video on the symbolism of La Mano Poderosa and how it is viewed. Uh, within, you know, the Hispanic cultures, whether it's Puerto Rican, Mexican, Cuban, uh, Venezuela, Colombia, whatever.
you know, or even people who use La Mano Poderosa, it is a symbol of protection uh, to ward off negative energies, especially a lower level spirit, uh, you know, to ward off the evil eye for, for, for protection uh, to defend. And the Mano Poderosa has not been officially recognized by the Catholic Church. So it is viewed more as a Puerto Rican folk a, a spiritual retalbo than it is view uh, that is anything canonized by the Catholic Church. But La Mano Poderosa has become a staple religious icon uh, within many Hispanic cultures, which have which have included it in their folk uh, religious practices. Many usually many use it, you know, within their espiritismo, within their altars. Uh, and I hope you learned something today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you do, please hit that like button. Please subscribe. Please leave a comment down below. Uh, and we're just going to end the video now. I hope you enjoyed it. San Sista Brujo Luis. Santo Sanse.